Hello, this is Suzanne from Hairdo Salon in Mesa, Arizona. And today I am going to teach you how to style your hair using a curling wand. I'm going to use the Paul Mitchell Neuro Unclipped Wand, which we also happen to retail here at the salon. I'm going to show you two different types of curls to create with the wand, one on each side of the head. You can see here that I like to take nice big sections. I feel like... Um, when you take two smaller sections, the overall look just sometimes is way too busy. You can see that I'm starting with my iron on the top of that section of hair. So the hair is coming up underneath. And then I'm evenly distributing that hair along the wand. I'm not turning it or twisting it, just nice and even. The wand above the piece of hair and the hair wrapping away from the face. I like to wrap the hair away from the face. Um, when I'm working in front of the ear, I feel like it's just a little bit cleaner, not quite so busy. Um, I'm going to just continue this pattern doing diagonal back sections. You can see that I tug on those ends of the hair a little bit. I feel sometimes when you use a wand that the ends of the hair do get a little bit bouncy. And so when the hair is still hot, you can manipulate it. And so I tug on those ends to straighten them out just a little bit so it's not quite so bouncy on the ends. I'm just going to continue this going all the way back. And then in just a minute, I'm going to be switching up my directions because I'm going to be towards the back of the head. So when I work in the back of the head, because everybody likes volume back there at the crown, instead of starting that curling and wand on the top of the head, I'm going to take it underneath. So the hair is going to come up over the top of the wand, which is going to give me all that volume right there in the crown. So right here you can see over the wand, but the same thing, distributing that hair nice and even, wrapping it around. And then when I finish, I drop it out and tug that end just a little bit. Now we're going to switch over to the other side of the head, and I'm just going to switch up my pattern a little bit. So instead of wrapping the hair nice and smooth and easy and even, we're going to twist the hair. And I'm going to show you here in just a minute the motion that my wrist makes when I do twist that. Uh, going to do big sections again, curling away from the face, putting my wand on the top of the hair. But you can see right here, twisting the hair with each wrap. As I go around each time, it's going to twist forward and back, forward and back with each rotation. So here we go. Wand's on the top of the head. I have to go stand behind the hair so you can see, so I'm a little wonky here, but I, I get the hang of it here by the end. But twisting and then untwisting, and then twisting and then untwisting, twisting and twisting, and then I lose the hair, but then I regain it and twisting and untwisting. All right, I'm gonna drop that down and I'm gonna tug on those ends just a little bit. This side, because of those twists, my pattern is a little lazier. It's a, it's a kind of a lazy S pattern. The other side is going to be a little bouncier because we just uh, wrapped it straight back. So twisting, untwisting, twist, untwist, twist, untwist. Just continue this all the way back. Nice big sections rolling away from the face. And again, when I work in the front of the head, in front of the ear, I do like to roll away from the face. <clears throat> and I, sorry, I like to start the wand on the top of the hair. That keeps it a little bit flatter. It gets more of that little sexy front piece in the hair where it kind of swoops down over the head. But, um, but this twisting, again, is going to make it more of an irregular pattern where the other side is going to be a little bit more perfect. I'm um, almost to the back. When I do get to my little back section, I'm going to switch that up again like I did on the other side because I want to get more volume in the back. And I'm going to put the, the hair over the top of the iron. In just a minute, my next section that I'm going to do, I'm kind of combining the front to the back. So you'll see that I actually angle the hair. Not I start to angle the hair back a little bit more to kind of connect the two sections. I don't want to just, you know, stop suddenly with my forward angle. You can see right there. Right there, I'm showing you where I'm kind of coming almost a little bit back as opposed to that um, iron leaning more forward, being over-directed forward. So do, do this little pieces, and then the last one will be 100% over the back to get me more volume. We'll show that here in a minute. Continuing to twist, 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 and one more section. 
Once you're finished, oh, here, I'm showing you <clears throat> over the top. Give me lots of volume there. And when I drop all these curls down, I'm going to make sure I let them cool. You want to always make sure that the curls are completely cooled down before you mess with them. If you mess with them too early and they're still hot, you're going to loosen the curl. You're going to comb that curl right out. Now, as far as finishing, I'm brushing these curls out. You don't have to brush them. You could just rake through them with your hands. You can see I'm testing to make sure that's cooled. And then once I do brush them all out, I kind of just go in there and fluff everything with my hands and, and kind of re, re liven up that uh, curl there. So you can see I'm just kind of playing with that a little bit. Um, and you know, the difference isn't huge from one side to the other, but the side that I wound is definitely a little bit lazier, a little bit messier, more disheveled. And the other side is a little bit more perfect. Um, but that is my mannequin head. That is my wand curls, two different sides. I hope that you like it. She loves it.